Okay, now someone actually brought up um, this thing of secret controls and what do I actually change? Um, and why do pros certain change certain things? So you might see, for example, one common thing that a lot of pros do is you might see something like this. And we're gonna go over what's useful, what's not, why some controls like this one are changed because they're so-called useless. And we're gonna go through it. It's actually a very good idea proposed by one of the members of the community. So if you do have any other ideas, uh, let, me down, let me know down below in the description, comment section, should I say, and we will go over them. So let's first start off with what's what. So classic controls is what traditionally everyone plays. Now, I'm an old school PES guy, so you might see these are my controls. These are old school PES controls. When I make a video, these are not the controls you will see. I remap the controls to be classic controls. So when you watch a video, don't think, oh, there's something different. It's just the exact controls that you're playing um, but majority of you guys will play here and as I said for those that started playing FIFA 2009 onwards you'd be using classic everyone before that are going to be using ISS or PES controls it's kind of what I would say there's a few players that may have like an unorthodox FIFA layout but I'd say mostly everyone played PES back in the day that was the let's be honest PES 5, PES 6, FIFA at that time people used to play it but not as much I had both but naturally I started on ISS uh, now, one thing is, there's a couple of buttons that are important. So, obviously, goalkeeper rushdown is important. Slide tackling is probably the most underused button, which I think should be used a lot, of, a lot more. Tackling. Now, this is the thing. Now, the reason why I prefer my... This is the old school PES layout. Now, back in the day in old school FIFA, you could hold the X button and you can tackle. Now, there's a reason why I put the tackle button to X. Number one, the right analog stick is closer to the X. You see that? As opposed to circle. It's small differences, but that's just something just to just to bear in mind, okay? And also, when you're in the attacking phase and you have the ball, if you press the X button, the game registered as a pass. So, and this is actually very important. You actually is actually an advantage that no one actually really talks about. I don't think anyone's actually talked about it, although they may have briefly mentioned it. And let me give you an example. In an attacking phase, when you have the ball over there, if you want to pass the ball, you press the X button or A on Xbox, right? Now, what happens is in the defensive phase is that when you press the X button, it registers as a tackle, yeah? But you can trick the game sometimes in making a pass instead of a tackle. So normally you'll have to tackle the ball holder, win the ball, and then make a pass after. Whereas with this, you can make a pass and the game will just pass the ball and not actually tackle the ball. It's a bit of a trick, um, but that's just one reason why I leave it on that, okay? The second reason is when you're trying to get better at the game, People press this tackle button way too much. As I said, you don't need to tackle in this game maybe once or twice in a half you need to tackle. Most of the time, the running jockey is all you need to win the ball back. They can run into you and you will get the ball. Listen to me carefully. If you hold the running jockey, you run into you, they will, you will get the ball regardless. Even after this title update patch last year, you can still do that. The tackle button shouldn't be used as much because people, they push forward and they go into animation and then they get caught in behind. Now... That's one thing. The second thing you might see a lot of pro players do is they replace um, um, teammate contain with um, with uh, the normal contain. Now, this is important. Teammate contain, in theory, when you're holding the run and jockey button, it's quite hard because you have to technically go index or middle finger, index, middle finger, and then you have to have your uh, index finger above the R1 button. Now, if you can imagine, you have to hold the control like this to use teammate contain. If you use your index finger naturally, it's awfully difficult to go like this, like this, like this, and defend like that. <clears throat> it, it, and from it puts a lot of it puts a lot of it puts your hands in a very weird position. But naturally, when you're defending, because you're not pressing the tackle button as much, and you're going to be switching with the right stick switch, you can use teammate contain. If because teammate contain is closer to the right analog stick, you can switch. So you can flick player teammate contain, flick player teammate contain, and you can press at a very very high level. Now. Most players naturally they hold the controllers like this, not like this. Technically, this is better. I do this to be honest. Um, if you want to, you can change it, it doesn't make that much difference. But what I'm trying to say is it's very difficult, for example, to use index fingers and hold the teammate uh, contained button. So that's why the in theory the best way is holding it like this. And the reason why is because you have a butt like if you want to switch play very quickly, your left finger is already there. Now, what I do is I go like this. And then I let go of the running jockey and I press the L1 button and I go back again. That's if I want to switch player. 
I normally keep my hands on these two buttons and I flick with the right analog stick to switch player. That's the way that I defend, okay? So teammate contain on X is actually better because to use this, then you have to tap R1, you let go of the run button. It gets kind of confusing. You have to bring your index finger up if you don't use that button normally. And it's a bit unconventional to use it that way. That's why a lot of people use a teammate contain button on X. And the reason why is this contain button is the most useless button inside the game. It should never be used ever. This is from a defensive phase. This is the button you should never be facing. Now, what contain does is your opponent's here. You're over here. I'm going to put this in yellow so you can see it. Contain basically keeps a distance and just stays with the defender. Now, if he goes there and he takes a shot, he or she, Contain won't cover for that. So it's a very archaic and newbie way of defending because it used to be the old X button, which is a tackle button. So Contain should not be used. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Now, the jockey button is something that I want to mention. People always get this confused. I say the L2 button is the most useless button in the game. Just to reiterate, I'm talking about the L2 button independently, okay? And the reason why is, is because the L2 plus the R2 button is the run and jockey, okay? Now, that means you can control the run and jockey between a 0 to 100% speed. This is very important, guys, okay? So ignore what you think you know already and kind of understand this theory of thought first. The L2 button by itself, you can only run at a normal jockey speed, let's say 40%. So what a lot of players do is, they use the run and jockey the entire game, and then they switch to normal jockey. Now that means you're either running at 100%, so let's say a player at 9900 sprint speed, let's say in theory, everything 100 defense there, and there's 100 as well, okay? And they were running at that speed, right? But when you go to the L2 button, it's a fixed jockey speed almost, okay? But if you hold the L2 and R2 button, but you move your left analog stick or you use the analog sprint. So you can use analog sprint to variably control the, um, the R2 button like an acceleration pedal. Then you can actually control the speed of the run and jockey. So you could be running at 100%, but if your opponent, but this is the thing, your opponent may do a skill move, for example, let's say a step over, a 45 degree angle step over, they get the speed boost at a 45 degree angle, and then they may be running here at 80% sprint speed. So let's just say, for example, here, they're jogging at 50, again everything's out of 100, here they're at 80, and at the exit point they're at 100. Now if you're using just the normal jockey button, you'll be using the running jockey at 50 or let's say tracking them, but you see between these two ranges, if you use the L2 button, you're going to get burnt regardless because the player with a skill move is running faster, you know, the velocity is faster. So that is why I advocate just using this. Now, this is an old school system that has always been used. So that's why, if you see, I think a lot of PES players actually play this way. And this is why I've been playing this way, because inadvertently, I didn't realize I was doing it, but when they changed in FIFA 13, the tackle button away defending used to work, it was just a bit of a natural control. And that is why I say the L2 button by itself, it's useless. Because you can only, from a defensive phase, let's just make sure, from a defensive phase, one second. Make sure. Because uh, people, while we'll we're talking all about defensive phases over here, and that is why I mean by itself, it's not worth it. Now, when I say useless, I kind of throw this term around just because to make a bit of a statement. Um, but it's more so people are like, what? And they go back and watch it. Yes, it's still useful. If you're really struggling with the running jockey and you can't use the L2 and the R2 and the left analog to control the speed. By the way, I got some videos. I got like seven videos on the run and jockey, how to control the speed on my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash nil guides, the most in-depth video. But also a lot of pros actually defend this way as well. Back in the day on the Champions Channel, I was doing some analysis, right? And I was looking at a lot of the pros. And a lot of the pros don't just use the L2 button by itself. They use it sometimes, but they actually use the run and jockey and use the left hand to control the speed of the run and jockey. They're just not aware of it. So they may use the L2 button to slow down. General rule of thumb is this should only be used inside the box. Let's say if you're really, let's say for example the goal is over here and you're really, really struggling, your opponent may use the L2 or you may use the L2 button to slow down. Um, but the problem is, as I said, you're running at 100% the speed and then let's say 30 or 40% the speed. You can't have that variable speed, whereas run a jockey and the left analog stick, you can go a little bit up, you're running at 30%. Full power, that's 100%. So you do have that control um, as well. Um, and that is why I would say a lot of players, they don't realize this, but they're actually controlling the speed of the run in jockey variably. They're just not aware of it. Uh, but yeah, that's the rest. Everything else is fine. Um, and uh, defend, that's defending. Now attacking, everything is completely fine. 
Personally, I have the shoot button next to square. Two reasons why. Um, a, it's an old school ISS layout. Um, B, basically back in the day, old school ISS guys will know this. To chip a ball, there's something called type two chip. And that's when you double tap the shoot button. Nowadays, that's so-called the time shooting mechanic. Back in the day in old school PEZ, that used to be how you used to chip the ball. And sometimes the goalkeeper used to come out so quickly, double tap square would be the way to chip or dink the ball over the goalkeeper. It was closer to the right analog stick, so it's easier for you to shoot the ball. Whereas moving to circle, just a bit more longer. Again, these are just small, fine margins, but that's something I used to do. So I used to actually use triangles to run button. Don't ask you. It's a, some of you guys forget it. I used to use triangles to run button like very, very like late 1999s, 2000s. And then I changed that. Um, but of course, never used that. But I'm just saying like, this is how I evolved through the systems. And then I went to the PES layout. And then when FIFA, when FIFA made circle shoot, there was no reason to make circle shoot. And that is why still to this day, a lot of players, a lot of my viewers probably still use square to shoot and there's nothing wrong with it. It's better than circle if you ask me. And it's actually easy to do the fake shot. If you rest your, your thumb like this, it's very natural. Can you see that? It's nat You're naturally resting. So you can do the worm, worm movement basically with your thumb to do the fake shot. Doing a fake shot like this is very unnatural inside the game to go like this and then do a fake shot. You see that? And sometimes you'll have to do a fake shot this way and then you have to press the shoot button after. This way you press the fake shot and then the shoot button simultaneously after that. Again, I've got another video on this, a seven part series, an hour long going over the fake shot, how to do it efficiently on my FIFA school, patreon.com forward slash nil guides under the advanced videos and that was from last year. Um, but it still applies. So remember that square button, having it there, the placement is actually more important. Uh, the only thing that I have negative in my system uh, so this is my layout. So I'll quickly show you. These are my controls. The only negative thing to so this is my defending one, as I, as I mentioned. Squares teammate contained. That's because it's an old school PES layout. And then that way X the pass button. The only negative thing that I have is um, my finesse shot is actually R2. Now this is not good um, because the R1 button, it's kind of binary. It's zero or hundred. Now, if you turn analog sprint on, you can control the R2 button like a gas pedal on your car. You know, you push it down only 10%, you're only gonna have 10% of the speed. 50%, um, 50%. But with the R1 button, it's just on or off, zero or one. It's just binary. So you only have two options, either gonna be running at full speed or not running at full speed. Um, so that is one of the downsides from a defensive point of view to control the run and jockey, even though I use, a I use the left down to the left down along to control the run and jockey, but in theory, you can use the R2 button as well. Um, that's one of the downsides of it. And the second downside of it is when I'm when I'm attacking, I can't run variably. Now, you have to be, I don't think there's a point of it. You should be running 100% speed all the time, my opinion. I don't even, even the pro players run 100%. Only a very few players dribble with like a variable speed. That's a very, very few players. I'm like, even out of all the pros, it's about one in 100 maybe. But there's something else that's kind of a bit of a downside with this is, if you use the R1 button to bring a player close, it doesn't really work. Um, if you press R1 button to bring a player close, it works, but it's very inconsistent. And the reason why is R1 is the default button to call a player. But if you use the run button as R1, that button then changes to R2. Now the R2 button, it's like a variable trigger, okay? Imagine between zero and 100%. So when I press it, even at, for example, 100%, the game doesn't register it as on or off. So that's why sometimes it doesn't work that well. EA, you need to change that, by the way, if you're watching this. It needs to be when you press it, the player comes close regardless. Um, but that is the only downside, I would say, to my control layer. But that's just something I just wanted to walk you through. Because a lot of players, they see, you know, a pro player is this setup, pro player is that setup. What happens is most of the time, a pro will use setup they're used to for all those years. There's no point changing. I go back, it kind of goes back to the old thing. It's, for example, ball relative, okay? Now, if my job wasn't to teach FIFA, I would never go to ball relative because I would only use play. I'll maybe try it because of my inquisitive nature. Maybe I would have then changed after. But it's only because it's my job to teach it, I understood the benefits of it. If you're like a pro player who's been playing the game for 15, 20 years and you see ball relative, are you going to change something that you've been using for like 20 years? You're not. You're not going to change. So that's why a lot of players, they don't want, and I don't blame them. If you have, if you're, I see switching, not even. Perfect as it is. Remember, think about it now, like rice switching is not perfect. So if you've been using something for the same way for 20 years, what's the point of changing? It's like saying, yeah, if you're driving a car, for example, and you're used to, for example, I don't know, 
I'm trying to think of a, a good example. Let's say you hold a steering wheel and you change the, the gear, the old school nine to three. If someone then told you, oh, you know what, change the gear with your right hand, then use your left hand to use the steering wheel, you're not going to do that. And even if you do that, it's going to take you too long to get used to the old level you're at, even if it was more efficient, just for the simple fact, because you've been doing it for such a long time. So that is just something I wanted to mention. Ball relative, I obviously I used it as my job to teach it, and then I realized after we do some testing that is actually superior to play relative. Um, but those are just things I just wanted to mention and reason why they don't change. People always ask, heck it, no, you know, you say this, but why don't they change? Well, this, that's the reason why. And it's the same with controls. You know, you might see some unique controls, but I would just say, in my opinion, general rule of thumb, I would use custom and I would swap these two around. If there was just one thing I would say, swap um, teammate contain around and make it the X button. Now, if you're an elite player, do this. Now, if you're new to the game, I would recommend actually leave it as default. I would say only do this if you're an elite player. And the reason why is, although X is easier to press to use teammate contain, a lot of players do not know how to use teammate contain. And when they use it, they may use it once or twice correctly, but they might use it incorrectly other 10 times. And that's the problem. The other 10 times, make one mistake, you can see the goal. Uh, but that's just something I wanted to mention in terms of the control layout, the so-called secret controls, um, secret buttons of how buttons work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos on the run and jockey, controller settings, the fake shot, all those elaborate tutorials, don't forget my Patreon series. Or you should be able to click here, patreon.com forward slash Neil Guys. Link is down below in the description. If you don't, if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund the money. That is a Neil Guys guarantee. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, of course. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.